Hey everyone, Ian from Eurogamer here, and I'm with Nick Burkham. Uh, you're the lead designer on TTR World Tour, is that right? Well, I'm lead designer and game director and CEO of Playwriters, so we're only a small team, so you have to take on multiple roles. But uh, right. yeah, it's been a great to come to EGX and show mm -hmm. off TTR World Tour. <laughs> The whole game idea, it's a combat racer, mm -hmm. um, and it is in the sort of same vein as a sort of micro machines thing with toy cars, Yeah, uh, but it's from a much more Mario Kart kind of camera angle, it's not mm -hmm. like the overhead kind of point of view, and so that's really where it's, where it's at, you know, yeah. it's a combat racer with amazingly beautifully rendered cars and detail. Well, you're a bit of a, a legend in the uh, in the video game industry. You were uh, the original creator of Wipeout, is that right? I was, yeah. This is a co-creator. Co you know, there was a, a fellow friend of mine, Jim Bowers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of it's his vision about the yep. visuals and the ship design and all the rest of it. But the you know the course design, the rules for the game, the weapon system, the the, the pickups and where they go, and all mm -hmm. the kind of game design side of it. Yeah, that was all me. So you've been kind of you've you've been a big lover of combat races and stuff since the early days. Well, I was turned onto it by the original Mario Kart's on right. SNES, which is where my heart absolutely sings. I love that mm -hmm. game. Yeah, absolutely brilliant, uh, brilliant game. Had made a big impact on me at the mm -hmm. time as well. Yeah, and uh, TTI World Tour, um, I can definitely detect shades of Mario Kart in there. Some shades of Wipeout in there as well. There micro is a machines. Bit on that. I mean, what, one of the things we try to do is take what people expect from those core races, you know, those those combat races, mm -hmm. and extend and hopefully surprise and delight as we've gone. Right. So. We've got a weapon system in there, but it's not just a fire, fire a weapon and slow a guy down. It's actually, there's a multi-layer kind of um, rock, paper, scissors element to it, where all, each weapon can be countered by another weapon. But obviously it takes time to learn the timings of this stuff. Um, we also have a sort of element halfway through the game where the weapons could be upgraded to super weapons, right? right. And that allows you to then start changing parts of the race course as well. So we, we, we have this kind of... Uh, multi-layered multi game design that, that gets deeper and deeper as you go on for it. So when we get to things like the special events, which are almost like puzzle games for racing, right? They'll give you uh, sort of like a three-star time to beat, mm -hmm. and it'll, see, it'll be seemingly impossible. With good clean laps and a fully souped up car, you'll sit there going, how on earth do you do this? But then you've got to start thinking a little bit outside the box, right? right. So what tools have I got in the arsenal? What do the wheel weapons do? What do the, what do the super weapons do? Which bits of the scenery can I mess around with? Right? Now, they're all clear about which ones you can play with, mm -hmm. but how best to use them and, and, and where do they take you? Which bits of the track do they cut out? So that's quite cool. So certain weapons affect certain points of the track, certain bits of the track? Basically, the, there's, there's certain um, parts of the track design are designed for um, being destroyed and removed, mm -hmm. right? which allows you to take a completely different route around the track, which right. is how you get these insanely fast lap times. Okay. But you won't have access to any of that until you've got at least halfway through the game. We know, we know that you know how the game functions, so now we have to give you something new that is surprising and, and hopefully delightful. <laughs> cool. So you got it. Obviously, I've I've played a little bit. I played uh, single player campaign mode, but you've also you're pushing for multiplayer as well. Well, the, that's one of the big things. You know, we 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 know that playing against your mates is great fun, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, obviously, longer term, we'd like to patch it as well and put in uh, split screen mode. But we're at the moment we're focused on an eight player network game. Right. Um, it's going to go out on PlayStation first and that's that's really a focus for that audience you know we we, we have a lot of fun playing this in the office mm -hmm. um, ordinarily getting to sort of 18 months into development maybe you're not so keen on your game anymore you just want it out the door but actually we still have a, a great laugh playing it because it's it, it, you never know what's going to happen mm. the weapons are used in different ways everyone knows the strategies now so it's a fairly even fight obviously when uh, when you get a newcomer mm -hmm. they're not going to keep up with us because we've been playing it a long time but we know the way the game's structured and the fact that all the geometry and the scene can be driven on effectively. It's not, you know, it's not instant reset everywhere, yeah. off-piste. Uh, we let that happen. Uh, we know that the, that the gamers out there will find things we don't know about. And we, le we like that. You know, it should be like that, you know? A bit more flexibility in the game design. Uh, we don't know where people will be able to jump to with boing wheels, 
and a supercar and a super turbo. Yeah. You know, they're going to find new ways of getting around the track that we never thought of, so we're yeah. happy with that. And the tracks, uh, they do look really cool. I, I'm a big fan of the Yo Sushi track, actually. It's that's, amazing, that's, isn't it? It's yeah. really cool. You've got the little uh, conveyor belts going around with the bowls on it and stuff. You <laughs> get in a big race and they're all flying everywhere and the cups are all going all over the place. And, and uh, as uh, racing games, it's normally quite important to have them 60 frames per second. Are you getting... Absolutely. There are games running at 30 hertz and they, they, they look good, they're smooth, they have lots of detail and stuff, but I think there's something about the racing genre in particular. Um, 60 hertz is such a clean, stable image. Uh, it responds very quickly to the joypad inputs and you can react and, and it's very much one-to-one -one experience of what's going on with the game. Mm. And the, the, I love the little... Um the little cars as well, the little like super deformed versions of real life cars. Yeah, they, they'll remind you of real cars. They're not actually licensed or anything, mm. but they're, um, we know there's enough design cues in them that will trigger the same response. <laughs> So I guess the big question then is uh, when are people at home going to be able to play it and on what platforms? Next month, PS4, that's that's what we're talking about at the moment. It is going to come to Steam and Xbox mm -hmm. eventually, but we're focused on PS4 at the moment. Um, and May is the launch month. Awesome. Well, um, thank you very much for talking to me and uh, best of luck with cheers, uh, the release. Brilliant, thank you. Um, cheers. Cheers. Nice one. Take care, man. <laughs> cool. So that was a lovely look at TTR World Tour, but that wasn't the only game we saw at EGX Resed. Uh, there's a video here with Chris playing Giant Cop. He put a HTC Vive on his face and he stomped around a city pretending to be a giant police officer and hilarity ensued. Chris also joined me for a let's play of Worms WMD. We had a fight uh, in Worms, not in real life. And uh, you can see who won if you watch this video right now. You can also check out 60 minutes of uh, brand new Worms WMD gameplay as well if you like. It's nice. Looks good. Graphics are pretty. Uh, what else? Oh yes, we did the Eurogamer show. Johnny and I talked about our favourite games of EGX. Uh, TTR World Tour was one of them, but there were others. And there was also a game that made me want to do a sick on myself. So you can find out what that was by checking out uh, the Eurogamer show. So uh, yeah, enjoy those. And don't forget to like and subscribe, you lovely people. Bye.